Turkey says it will not tolerate any further Kurdish rebel attacks being launched from Iraq. Its president, Abdullah Gul, has warned he's prepared to ignore U.S. objections and send troops into Iraq. Lawrence Lee reports from near the Turkey-Iraq border on how ordinary Kurds are dealing with the threat of wider conflict. These are the hills and valleys of what some here have always dreamed will one day be a place called Kurdistan. But with the emergence of a new international coalition intent on destroying the separatists of the PKK, it all looks further away than ever. In the Kurdish towns here, life is hard enough without a military crisis on their doorstep. These are battered, forgotten-looking places, a world away from Ankara or Istanbul. And many, including the AK Party, which rules Turkey, believe that disrupting the PKK has as much to do with offering hope as it does killing gunmen. These incidents will only end if there's a big investment in this region, if factories are built. As you see all around us, all the young people are unemployed. If they gave them opportunities to work, the rest would come easily. There are some surprises here too, expressions of what you might call Kurdishness. For so many years, banned in Turkey are accepted at least to a point, and it hardly looks as if people live in fear of an ethnic backlash. And here's a man who broke the mold, a Kurd who sees himself absolutely in the tradition of Ataturk, who organizes political rallies of Kurds, expressing their devotion to the state of Turkey. In his world, it is the PKK man who is the traitor, and not him. I don't believe the PKK represents Turkish people. They kill Kurds as well. Even the Kurdish political party lost votes during the last election. Why? Because our people are more aware now. Instead of following these organizations, they want national unity and to share our resources. Yet the PKK has proved itself stubborn. No question that some here are getting ready for a fight. So the fact is that things really aren't as black and white, as cut and dried in the Kurdish towns as you might think, and there are a variety of different opinions. It's by no means clear how much support the PKK actually enjoys here. And yet, because this is all about identity and ethnicity, there is certainly a section of the population here that feels that an attack on the PKK will really provoke rather than appease the Kurdish population. Here's another contradictory scene a night of Kurdish song and dance, exactly the kind of event which would have been banned a decade ago, and which is the kind of thing the Kurds routinely complain that they're deprived of. The event organizer served almost a decade in jail for membership of the PKK, an accusation she still denies, and says it was only because of them that the Turkish state made these concessions. Here, this new conflict will only lead to more new recruits heading for the hills. PKK came from the Kurdish people. The war didn't start last year. It's been here for 20 years. 30,000 people have died. Even then they couldn't finish the PKK. It's wrong to try to exterminate the PKK. They can't do it. They have to find a democratic solution to this problem. Exact conclusions from all this are hard to find, but recent history suggests that you can't blow up an ideology and that strong ethnic ties are impossible to break and that Kurds are nothing if not united. Lawrence Lee Al Jazeera on the Turkey-Iraq border.